choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Good morning, Insurance Syndicate. Happy Thursday. Happy New Year. Hope everybody's amazing. Uh, of course, John Wetmore here, coming out of Atlanta live. Excited for our first show of the year, or my first show of the year. I know it's not our as a group, but, um, you know, I was talking to Johnny a couple weeks ago, and he was like, I think we should go after some bigger names, bigger people, get, get some excitement in the group. So I'm like, F it. I don't know anyone better that we could have had on for the first show of the year. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring on, I'm gonna just get, get rolling. He's over there working, doing 12,000 things at once. Cause it's what he does. My buddy, Andy Elliott, for those that don't know one, I assume you can hear me loud and clear. Um, oh yeah, we're ready for war, baby. My dude, for those that don't know, this dude is like a sales machine, um, comes from, and I'll let him get more background as needed, but comes from the sales car sales background. My, I've read something, dude, that you, you made like. I don't know. I don't know how old you are. Early twenties or something. Over seven hundred thousand, just as an individual car sales dude, like which is bananas. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not. It's actually pretty easy. You just got to do the work. <laughs> hey, relative to what's out there for others. Yeah, yeah. The ninety-nine percenters thought it was hard, and uh, yeah. we'll get into that. I love the thought process already, dude. I I was reading something the other day, and I don't want to misquote the stat. How many car d dealerships or salesmen do y'all train right now? What's the name? Um, so, so, so we train 420,000 salespeople. That's how many people that are currently on our training system. And then we have 11,000 companies. So, you know, I mean, the automotive space is a big space that we dominate. But at the end of the day, you know, we're dominating solar, you know, whether it's insurance, whether it's medical sales. I don't care. Look, do you speak? Do you communicate? Do you talk for a living? Yeah. Right. You got to close a transaction. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's it. I mean, that that's that's the space we're getting into. It's just where people can literally recreate and in the sell space get paid what they're worth. I love it, dude. I um I remember the first time we met, I think it was in Vegas. I was at one of y'all's events and I was sitting with Andrew Taylor watching, and I'm like, and you obviously you're 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 into the insurance space now. For anyone that's confused, you're definitely attacking that like with craziness. It's it's fun to watch. Yeah, we're lear we're learning how to build it. I mean, it's, just like, anything. it's like you're you're learning, yeah. you know, and and we're learning yeah. from you, and we're and we're learning, and we're and we're sponges, you know. Yeah. Um, I remember. You know. I was watching you on stage there, and I was I was sitting next to Andrew, and I'm like, dude, this is their first insurance event, and he already speaks the language. Like you were dropping link, like you're you're, and what I love, dude, the first time we met. You, it, and you've got a sales background and you got great revenue, whatever you want to share, you can share. Like you don't have to keep doing everything you're doing other than you have big goals and dreams and want to help a lot of people. But dude, the thing that stood out most to me, bro, was how much of a student you are still. Like that was nuts to me. How many questions you asked? Like you asked between that two days we were together, you asked more questions about the business than some agents that have been with me for a couple of years. We well, can tell a lot about people by the questions they ask. Yeah. You really can. You know, pe people say there's no such thing as a stupid question, right? And I, I completely disagree with that. I, I tell you this, a, a person, you can tell a lot about who they are, what they want to know, who they want to become by the questions they ask. Yeah. Um, and I just want to tell you, like, you know, how many times and how many podcasts and how many people need to tell people what to do before they start consciously paying attention and listen. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, that's the difference. And we're going to talk about that today, about consciously listening. If you're around five crackheads, you'll be the sixth. There's not a doubt about it, okay? Because it's easy to go down. But if you want to go up, if you want to go up and you want to elevate up, get ready for the suck fest. 
Okay. And what does that mean? That means that you're going to have to consciously keep your mind working at all times and keep the retention skill on point at all times. I'm glad we're up to date with technology. I'm glad that we all have these powerful CRMs and automations and social media. But dude, the greatest thing that we've ever had in the history of time, which is our mind, people don't use it. And I'm going to tell you, if we ended it here right now, we didn't talk about another single thing. If a person could go put their phone down and they could literally go into a dark room and do what people used to do, which is get a spiral notebook and write down what they want at the top of the piece of paper and write down 10 to 15 ideas on how on things that they could do today to make that that happen today. Even if 10 of them were wrong and only one of them was right, that person would grow that day. Yeah. Now nah, they don't do that. You want to go post on social media, all your quotes, what you want to do, who you are, and you don't work your mind. You're missing the most greatest asset in the world. Do you know why? Because it was given to you for free. And if you don't pay for it, you won't pay attention. Anybody you give free training to will never appreciate the training. That's why we make people pay for training. Because if they don't pay for it, they won't understand it. If it's free, if I give you a car for free, you won't take care of it. If you go pay for it with your own money, you'll take care of it. Okay? We're not giving our kids wealth. We're giving our kids habits. My kids ain't getting my money. My kids are going to get my habits. And if they can generate those habits and take care of them themselves and, and become badasses, then maybe they can take care of the money. But I see families lose generational wealth all the time because they give it to someone else who didn't earn it. And I'm just going to say like, dude, imagine if you had a problem right now, John, and I'm just I'm like not to get off on this, but if you had a problem right. and like right now you have an issue. All right. What does that person do? Well, you should go to get a spiral notebook in a pen and a piece of paper, write down the problem at the top of the piece of paper and then write down 10 to 15 ways that you could fix that problem. And then you don't call your mom. You don't tell your partner at work. You don't, you don't tell your family, you figure it out by working your mind. People don't do that. And that's the reason why we got more losers right now, more people quitting because they never access the, the most powerful thing they've ever been given in the world, which is their freaking mind. And I'm not anybody special, but anybody watching this right now, if you'll do what I just said and we're done, you will become a multimillionaire. You will get what you want. Life still will be a bitch, but you will hit your numbers and you will become great. And by the way, you will destroy everybody else who doesn't do this. And 99% of the world, they set port, they go out in the ocean, they drift their entire life. Yeah. Is, is that what you see all these eight, all these salespeople you train? And my, one of the questions I have, what is you, what do you see as like the number one problem in a sales environment? Let's say for the people that do change, you know what I'm saying? Like you start with them and they're at X and then whatever your quote was, where you, I think you said something about tripling your sales in 30 days on, on on some yeah, of your training. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we said we can triple your skill in 30 days. It's, yeah. it's what do you easy. think some of the biggest changes are that you see? Well, for the people that really change? Yeah. Yes. Well, 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 number one, mentality, first thing. Okay, look, the way you think will determine who you become. John, right now, think about a problem. All of a sudden, you get anxiety, you get nervous, you start having negative thoughts, and you get stirred up. Okay, listen to me. I love anxiety. I love pressure. I love stress. Stress makes me better. Pressure makes me hungry. I love to get pissed off. Controlled anger can be the greatest tool in the world. I have warmed myself daily by controlled anger. Okay. I am going to war daily. So when I take a person and I'm going to explain the difference to you that won't write shit down, won't listen, won't ask good questions. People say people are built different. No, they're not. If you say built different by showing up earlier than you, then leaving later than you, making more calls than you, having a better attitude than you, having better thoughts in my head, John, there's 60 to 70,000 thoughts going through a person's heads a day. If those thoughts in your head are freaking a trash can, you're a trash can. You got a minimum wage mindset. You got a nine figure mindset. Do you believe you have a delusional belief? Everybody can buy, came to buy and will buy as long as you do your job. Do you believe that nobody in the world's ever met anybody but like you? Do you believe that about you? Are you talking good to yourself? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Listen, our goal is how we change people right out the gate before we even get into skill is we alter the mentality. 
You have to alter the mentality. If you don't alter the mentality, you have the same person that has more skill with the trash can head. No ways, man. No ways. The fastest way, the only way to change someone's life is to change the way they think. Yeah. I Listen, talking- try it any other way. It won't work. It's yeah, impossible. I agree. I agree. I was talking to um, Andrew Taylor the other day. We were talking about y'all's numbers. And uh, when, when you, y'all been in the insurance business, how long? Was it like spring? It was just earlier this year, right? Yeah, they started Officially. in spring. So we, so me and Jackie got involved in, in August. So about four or five months ago, and it was doing, it was doing about a hundred grand. And then we got, what are you doing now? Well, we're doing about a million now, but the biggest thing is a million a month for those listening. Yeah. A million a month, but (laughs) but that's nothing. Really. The problem is, is that we're, we're understanding where we went wrong. Right. And, And by the way, so we listen to you, John, like you, John, you tell me, right. And what I've learned is that I've baby people. Okay. Because, you know, I want to make sure they, they learn, but I, then I understand they don't want it. And if they don't want it, there's nothing you can do with someone who don't want it. Okay. I am a grown up. I am an adult. I have three kids at home. I have a wife. If anybody is of the age of 18 years old and they're allowed to sell insurance, they're considered an adult. Okay. They should want to um, take their own success into their own hands. We should not have to babysit you. We don't hand feed you. You should go attack. You should understand this. The fa- If I would have been given this opportunity, and I'm just going to say this, um, yeah, so we're doing a million. Where will we get? Well, we're gonna we're figuring it out now. What we did wrong, and by the way, you got to make the mistakes. You told us it was gonna happen. You said don't touch the stove. I touch the stove. I'm like, damn, he was right. <laughs> that stove is hot, man. Shit. And then I'm like, are you, you sure? Oh, damn, it is hot. Okay, he wasn't playing, man. That shit's hot as hell. Don't touch the stove anymore. By the way, what we've learned is that it's not the number of people we recruit, which I know everybody says recruit as many as you can. It's the number of people who are willing to even do any work. Okay. You know, so we, in the beginning, we recruited a lot of people. We thought that that was the game. And then we realized that, man, look, dude, we need to find some people who want to work. I mean, that's the truth. I mean, we can throw everybody we want and get them a license and I'm okay with that, but dude, that's, that doesn't change the numbers. It doesn't change the bank account. It doesn't change anything. We need to find people who want to work. So what we decided to do is number one, and by the way, I love finding licensed agents. I love finding people that are already writing business. I love all that stuff. But I would rather, and if anybody's listening to this, I would rather find somebody who's hungry and wants an opportunity over somebody who's educated and has experience. That's my personal deal. You know why? Because John, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna go back to when I sold cars when I was young. Okay. At 18 years old, I had, I had a manager. You know what he told me? He goes, the best automotive sales guy in the world at 18 years old, he goes, the best guy in the country makes 120 grand a year. So I need you to understand if you do an amazing job, John, you could make a buck 20 a year. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I'd be rich if I made that, yeah. right? And uh, this is in 1999. And John, but I want you to understand something. He, he, he put a leash on me for me yeah. to see what I thought was possible. And guess what happened? I made 120 grand. Imagine that. I went straight to the water line and I stopped. Watch this shit. Had a new manager came in from a big group, right? Flew across the country, got a job with us. And you know what he said? He goes, dude, you can easily make a quarter of a million a year selling cars. I said, how? Th- that guy said, nobody makes more than 120. You know what? He goes, dude, I made 250 in Pennsylvania. I said, be it selling cars? He goes, yeah. He goes, I got the pay stub in my glove box. I said, show me. He walks me out to his car and he shows me. Huh, make 250 the next year. Imagine whatever the hell you put in your head is what's going to happen, which is why I can get on the phone right now with anybody and I can close them. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care what problems they see. I don't see those same problems. All I see is opportunity and greatness. So when you talk to me and that's my perspective, I am going to have infectiousness on you and you are going to see things the way that I see things. That is the way this conversation is going to go. I'm not even worried about it. I love you. Love don't lie. I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to love you to death and you're going to do what I want you to do. That's the end of it. I'm going to help you. This is the game. That's the only game I play. I don't care what game you play. I know what game I play. I own this game. I know the rules to the game. I own the game. Well, so what happens is um, by the time I'm 20, I end up making a half a million a year sell cars. Okay. Now I'm doubling that guy's number. And then my best month was like, or my best year was like 716 on my W2, but like 150 grand, 1099 money. So I made about hundred, about, about 860 grand selling cars. By the way, this is, 
this is common in every area of life. Everybody wants to know what's possible. How about just unlimited? How about that? How about there's not a shortage of money? How about this? How much do I have to train? How about as much as it takes? How about that? How good are you? Can I battle test you right now on the spot? And you handle every objection. Can you walk me through A to Z, what you do for a living? Are you better than anybody else in the world? Need the top 1%? Are you getting the numbers right now that you want? Are you getting the results right now that you want? If you're not, then you need to train more. It's very, very simple. We don't need to go ask anybody. We need to look in the damn mirror. We need to use our mind. We talked about from the very beginning. And we need to say, hey, man, we are the problem. It is me. I am the problem. I am, I'm also the solution. And it's that easy. For everybody watching this, they need no, no education. Okay. They no, no education. I don't care who you were yesterday, who you want to be today. Dude, literally, if you are dead Ian on broke right now and you have no money, all I can tell you is that if you can steal this mentality that I'm telling you about and you will guard it with, for your entire life and never let anybody take it, you will take over the fucking world. Swear on my life. You will take over the world. It might take a year or two. Okay. But I assure you, you will see something that 99% of the people in this world will never see. And you will have something that none of them will ever have. And nobody can stop you except you. That is the game. Now, you know, the rules. Now you can own the game. I love it. Hey, I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see the screen or not, but I put a question up here from Joe. <clears throat> he wanted to know outside of work ethic, is there anything else you're looking for in a potential recruit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so I would ask him something like this. Hey, so what are you currently now doing now? What are you doing now? The guy says, whatever. I say, well, Hey, why is it, why isn't that working? Yep. Jobs fault. They ain't doing their job. Is it you? What's going on? Hey, let me ask you a question, Joe, and I'm going to make an easy one for you. Um, so I'm gonna, let's say I'm talking to, to Joe. I say, Hey Joe, let me ask you a question. How old are you? Joe says I'm 30 years old. I say, cool, Joe. How, how, how old were you when you started working? I was 16. All right, Joe. So you've been working for 14 years. Make sense? Cool, Joe. How much money you got in the bank? Joe says, I, I got 20 grand. Joe, I'm going to take 14 years of work, divide by, divide by $20,000. Joe, you've averaged to make uh, $1,500 a year since you've been working. You've given 365 days every year for 14 years to only make 1,500 a year that you've been able to save. Joe, what I see is that you're the best bill payer I've ever seen. You don't save any money because you don't have the opportunity to earn big money or you've had the opportunity and you didn't take it uh, and you took it for granted. So I'm going to ask you a question, Joe. You want the, the next 14 years to go like the first 14? Let me ask you a question, Joe. Do you know what compressing time frames is? If I can show you that you were able in three years to do what you couldn't do in three lifetimes, would you commit to it? Listen to what I say and go all in. If the answer is yes, I'm going to recruit the guy. The guy goes, ah, not really. You know, I do this. I do that. Oh, okay. You're the king of side hustles. You're the master of none. Yeah. I know guys like you. Yeah. They have 20 grand in the bank yeah. or they're, or they're broke. See Joe, the life that you want, you're going to need to commit and be close to somebody who knows what you need to be doing. And I know. Okay. So if you want to commit, I'll welcome to joining my team. But if you're not going to commit, I'm not even going to send you over the, 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 I don't need to recruit that person anymore. I don't want to be the guy with the most recruits. I want to be the guy with the most money in the bank. I want to be the guy with the, with, with the team making the most money. I would rather have 50 people that I can count on than 200 people that don't know if they want to wake up in the morning. I'm just going to be honest with you. And by the way, one guy goes, well, Hey, I got more people. And I'm, Hey, cool, man. You run around and you figure out who wants to wake up that morning. But for me and my team, no ways. Okay. I tell my guys every day, I say, Hey, listen to me. Any of you guys want to be average or in the wrong place? Look, if you want to sell a policy a, a month or sell a policy a week and you want to do this part time, I'm cool with it. You need a little extra money. Hey, look, man, we'll get you set up. Okay. But at the end of the day, dude, if you really went all in on, on this, you could make way more money than what you're doing full time. You're dabbling in it. I mean, why would you dabble in, in, in a great opportunity like this, where, like you said, it, it makes more millionaires than anything else in the world. Dude, and by the way, who said that the insurance space makes more, more millionaires? Siri says it. Google says it. The internet says it. You didn't make it up to get your people motivated. Yeah. Dude, it's facts. So if it's facts, then what are we doing? I mean, I'm just telling you, dude, right now, you either stay safe and stay the same. Or, and by the way, you're taking the biggest risk at all right now at actually not going all in on yourself. 
Joe, John, you're healthy right now. I'm just saying like, John, you're healthy. You can go all in. You have, maybe you don't have money, but guess what? The best place to be in the world is dead in on broken on empty. That's the best place to be because you got a fire in your belly that comfortable people don't have. Okay, dude, you're perfect for this. And if you do it right and you pay attention and you learn the skill, dude, you will look up. And like I said, in two years, you'll have a life that no one else ever imagined you'd have. You will look in the mirror and love who the fuck you are. Imagine that. Yeah. Okay. By the way, right now, if I'm talking to you about recruiting, you know why? It's because you're on the market. Dude, listen to me. If, if you're if you're dating, if you're married, you don't talk to some chick about like, what is she like? Because you're married. You're not even concerned with her. Yeah. Okay. So when I see people talking, I'm saying, hey, dude, you're not 100% closed that what you're doing now is what you want to do. Okay. And by the way, you're asking me because you clearly want to do what I do. You, you look at me. I, I fucking am fired up, jacked up, having the best day of my life. And your ass is burned out. And you're wondering, how do I have energy like that? Well, you got to do what I do, man. Do listen to me. I'm going to tell you this money isn't everything. Everybody understand this. What do I look for in recruiting? I build a culture. You know, what does that mean? I say, hey, man, you know what? I'd rather choose working for the right people for less money than working for the wrong people for more money. I would rather work for a team that's fun and make less money and enjoy my life and have a miserable life and just focus on trying to make money with people I don't want to be around. Okay. So I'm just telling you, dude, I'll say, look, man, you get one life, dude. You can't take your money with you, but you damn sure can take experiences. Okay. Welcome to joining a badass team. And that's it, man. So I think for any, any leader watching this or anybody that wants to go recruiting, like dude, be the coolest motherfucker out there. Be the coolest person in the country. Be awesome to your people. But by the way, be direct and tell them the truth. That's what I'll tell you. I mean, I'll say this, John, we're very direct. I need people to be direct with me, but I'm going to explain something to you. I don't tear anybody down. I, when people have problems, I don't say, Hey man, you got a problem. I'll say, Hey dude, look, man, do you really believe that like you're going to stay cursed by that? I mean, or, or do you think that's something we can beat? I think it's something we can beat. Okay. Now, if you're 100% committed, I'm committed. Let's go wrap that. You know, let, let, let's go crush that, that curse. Okay. And when you put a man or a woman's back against the wall, they become dangerous. I like to put people's back against the wall and I'll go against the wall with them. You know what I mean? We'll fight our way out. I like gunfights. I like crazy shit like that. I like yeah. wild stuff. I, I want people and people who work with us to have an adventurous life. And by the way, I'll tell them, I believe in total recreation, which means I don't want you to stay the same. I don't want you to be who you are right now. I want to go to that next level. I want to dig deeper. I want to, I want you to meet that person inside of you that you've never met. I remember when we were talking, I don't know if you remember this dude, when we were talking off stage, I think Brad was on stage and you and I were sitting next to each other. I was just getting to know you a little bit. And I remember you told me that like you created what you are today. Like you weren't, this wasn't always you, like you didn't come out of the womb who you are. I was today. born a loser, dude. Yeah. Talk about that, man. I, I want to hear, I, I think people want to hear stuff like that. How did you go about yeah, it? Yeah. So, so, so I think that there's a, there's a, there's a fucking a mental trap. I call it a mental trap that a lot of people are born into, okay? The things that they've been through, the experiences they've gone through, the shit they've seen, you know, it's like an elephant. Like they've been programmed. They were tied by a rope as if it was a baby that was staked in the ground. The little baby elephant don't think he can do anything. And so it doesn't, it quits trying, it lays down next to the stake. As it gets older, it can rip that stake out of the ground very easily, but, but they stake it to the ground. They put the rope on its leg and what happens? It lays on the ground. Okay. What I want to tell you is everybody on this call has been lied to somebody at one. And by the way, you were probably the biggest liar to yourself. You're by the way, I think for 2023 and I'm not going to get off here, but I think everybody needs to find an enemy. Okay. Number one, there's two enemies. Number one, there's the outside enemies who outside of you said you couldn't do it. Are you going to let them prove you right? Or are you going to prove them wrong? Okay. Get pissed off. Take it personal. Some of you guys are like, well, I don't want to do that. Okay, cool. Well, you stay the same. All right. But for the rest of us, I'm going to war. OK, I was born a warrior. So were you. OK, so stop acting like you weren't. Who told you to be soft? OK, I'm a loving person. I love everybody. OK, but I am ready to go to war right now. I will die trying to find my best self. And even when I think I find it, there's another version coming around tomorrow morning. And by the way, who you become will be ultimately how you think. So I was born a loser literally a mental trap. 
you know, mom left when I was two. She's an alcoholic, which usually dads leave. This was the mom, which is kind of a little different story. Who gives a shit though? She's a loser. She's a crackhead. She rolls out Jerry Springer shit show. You're old enough to know who Jerry Springer was. Jerry Springer. Um, we were raised by the streets. What does that mean? No curfew. Second grade. Didn't come home for weeks. Spend the night at friend's house all over the place. Dude, never home. I, I could leave for a month and a half, dude. My dad never knew I was gone or whatever. It didn't matter. It's just weird, man. Right. But guess what? It, when, that, when you grew up that way, that's, that's not weird. So there was no accountability. And when there's no accountability, what happens? Straight D's and F's in school. Um, my senior year, I'm telling you this. Um, and that's why I want to say that all a man or a woman, I'm going to get to my point here. All a man or a woman has ever asked for in their life is an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know it was going to be an insurance job. Okay. You just wanted the opportunity. That's all I wanted to. Okay. Um, my senior year, I'm making straight D's. Semester tests are coming up. I'm clearly not going to pass because I don't study. I don't, tra I don't, I, I don't even go to school, man. You know what I mean? I'm a loser. I'm going to get held back. Boom. 1999, May 3rd, biggest tornado in Oklahoma, five miles wide. Smokes my high school. Guess what they do? They say anybody with passing grades get to graduate. Well, that's me. My, my school got smoked. I graduated. Didn't have to take the semester test because uh, we were like in a war zone or some shit, you know, and they blast out the whole area. It was like a damn bomb went off. So guess what? I got to walk. I graduated. Dude, I got a free pass. Oh, best free pass I ever got in my life. Did construction for one month, said screw that shit. That was horrible. Dude, work from freaking morning to, to late. I'm just like, dude, I'm not doing this. I want to go to the gym and work out and lift heavy weights, but I don't want to pick up freaking plywood, move bricks, all that stuff all day long. I'm not doing that. I wanted to do something else, but I was dead in on broken. I didn't have nothing. Well, guess what happens? I literally, uh, my older brother or my my uh, my best friend's older brother goes, dude, I can get you a job selling cars. And um, he goes, dude, you'll make five grand a month if you're really good. And by the way, if I had five bucks, I would have been happy. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. This guy picks me up for work. I go to work with him. And I don't know how this happens, right? But I'm just going to tell you what happened. I ended up making $1,700 my first day. And when he paged me in and he goes, Andy, you know how much money you just made on that car deal? And I didn't even know how to sell cars. I got lucky. It was a lay down. I'm sure you had called somebody before. And they're like, oh, yeah, we want to buy insurance and yeah, let's buy everything you got by the way my husband needs insurance my kids need insurance you're like dude like this is easy my first sale was that way bro <laughs> i mean but it was a lay down right like if you call me or whatever like i got that guy right he's like yeah i'll take it and i was like oh, okay here's the price here's the pay. he's like oh yeah we'll do that that's cool i'm like dude this is easy you guys were complaining about this my manager pages me and I have no skill. And he goes, how much money you just made? And he goes, and I said, how much? And I said, if I just made a much, no, enough money to eat lunch, I'm good. He goes, dude, you just made $1,700. And dude, I'm telling you what happened when he said that. <laughs> Number one, my entire life just changed. I didn't want to party anymore. I didn't want to hang out with my friends. I didn't even want the life I had anymore. I wanted a new life immediately. I said, I will never be the same again. And, and, and those two, and that day I decided to do two things. Number one, I was going to learn my business better than anybody else in this world. And I wanted to become the number one salesman in the world in the automotive space. Okay. And I did it. And I, and I smashed everybody whenever I sold. And I'm going to tell you how I did it. I spent all my time either selling something, looking for something to sell or training to get better. I didn't have a TV in my living room. I had a whiteboard. I constantly negotiated on the whiteboard. I knew every objection that someone could, could possibly give me. And it was dangerous at 10, 15 different ways of handling it. I looked at people in the eye when I spoke. I literally articulated my words in such a way that I, that I spoke to people that was unlike anybody else I'd ever spoke to in their life. I knew that nine out of 10 people bought a car from someone else. I didn't want to be anything like them. I knew that if you went to a Starbucks, and people was, you know, doing a survey. Hey, what do you think about car salesmen? People would say they're robbers, cheats, thieves, and liars. But what would they say after they met me? I knew that I had control over my own destiny from that one commission. And I woke up and I pray that this is a wake up call for anybody watching this and that you understand it's a simple decision. And my life changed forever. I had to break through some leashes that I had because remember this, always remember this, John, until you die. If you can teach someone everything you know, that's called knowledge. And But they have leashes in their head that they don't believe 
that they can do what it is, even though they know the knowledge, they can't get the performance. Okay. So performance equals knowledge minus leashes. As you teach people knowledge, you have to remove leashes. So performance equals knowledge minus leashes. Anybody that I train, the reason why I go for the mental attack first, because if I can't mentally change the way you think, no matter what I teach, you're going to, it doesn't work. John, you can't pick up the phone and use the same script that I use. Even though that my script works, you can't use it. The reason why, because you don't believe what I believe, John. John, when they pick up the phone, I was thinking that they're waiting on me to answer, to call them. I was thinking that they were looking for someone like me that could explain it in a way that they could understand. You see, John, they're not frustrated about the insurance calls. They're not frustrated that people keep calling. They're frustrated that they've been having to deal with fucking amateurs. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're frustrated. Mm -hmm. But now they get to deal with the pro. It feels good to deal with somebody that knows what they're talking about and that actually cares and is present in that conversation. I don't care about the sell. If I don't earn the right to get more time with you and to ask for your business, that's my fault. The customer's not a bad customer. I hear people say, I got bad leads. How about you're not any good at what you do? I mean, for real, right? Yeah. Like if somebody yeah. filled out some information, okay, what else do you want them to do? Buy it online and you get credit for it? Dude, listen to me. What else do you want? I want better leads. Well, what if you're not that good? I mean, look, let's role play together, okay? Go ahead and call me. And I'll let them call me and I'll be like, okay, cool. No, I'm not interested. Hey, right out the gate, I'm not interested until I am. So can you create interest? Well, I don't know. Well, that's why you're not any good. And that's why all the leads suck because you're not any good at what you do. But instead of complaining, right, you should be studying. You should be becoming a student instead of a scavenger. Okay? Dude, listen to me. If you want to graduate, get a book and go to school. That's the only way you're going to graduate. Okay? Dude, freaking scavengers complain about the results they didn't get from the work they didn't do. That's it. But students freaking win. So I'm just telling you, man, I love self-education. And if anybody gets anything out of this, the only way to wealth, the only way, there's only one way to wealth, only one, unless you win the lottery and you'll lose it all anyways. Okay. <laughs> but the only way to wealth, John, is through self-education, which is why with the beginning of the call, you said, hey, you asked me all these questions. You asked me this, you asked me that, because I was wanting you to educate me. I want to be the student. I want to stay a sponge. John, it's not my job to tell you. John, you know what I hate? And for anybody watching this, I want you to think about this. This is what I hate. So I'm, I come to you and, and I'm like, John, I don't know if this insurance thing is working out, man. I've been working my butt off. You know, I'm really not making a lot of money. I mean, it's just, it's hard. Hey, hey all right, listen, let's train. Let's go through some stuff here, okay? Like, let's just go through and check the boxes here. Let's see if we can find some holes. Let's figure out how to kick our own ass, okay? Like, let's do this together, me and you, right? And then, and then we're going to reset. We're going to go to war together. And then I start telling you, John, okay, John, hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. Hey, this is what you're doing wrong. And he said, yeah, I know, John, but this is what I like to do. Come on, man. That's the problem. 100%. You want to tell me what you like to do. See, I don't care what you like to do. You're not doing what you need to do. You need to have the best mentality in the world. You need to wake your ass up at 5 a.m. and hit the gym before no one's around. I don't want to work out. I want to make money, Andy. I don't want to get in shape. I know. That's why you'll never be mentally tough. That's why you'll never believe in yourself. And that's why you're not, your business will never go through the roof. You clearly don't understand the operating system to being an entrepreneur or making a lot of money. I'm just telling you, dude. Physical fitness is the most number one, most important thing that a successful business person will tell you. I tell people all the time, it goes physical, mental business. If you physically go to war every morning in the gym, okay, you will be in a great mood and you will bring special energy to the people who you really care about in life, which are your wife, kids, and family. And you will set the tone for what being a badass looks like to them. And then you also look in the mirror. You like who you are. You love how your family, how you're taking care of them. And you will like who you are. You'll be freaking mentally on fire. And then you're unbreakable and you will break records instead of breaking like all these weak ass people everywhere. And people are like, well, I can't believe you're saying weak ass people. What do you mean? It's the truth. Like, look, you need to get in a circle full of people that can tell you the truth and you won't get offended. Look, if you're looking to get offended, you'll find it every single day. 
I, I swear to God, no matter what I say, there's people that are looking. Imagine this, John. I'm your wife, and you say, and, you, and, and I say to you, hey, John, I, I, I saw you, uh, I saw you, you cheated on me, John. You know what I mean? I'm done. You cheated on me. I saw you. You drove away in a white car. I saw you drive away with her in a white car. And you say, babe, what are you talking about? I drove away in a tan car. It wasn't white. See, people, you can tell them what they need and they'll find one thing you don't say just perfect. And then they'll hang on to that. You're so stupid, man. Listen to me. Understand what I'm trying to tell you. I'm giving you my heart. I'm actually, I'm not perfect in what I say. I'm trying to help you. Who else is trying to make you great? No one. Everybody else is telling you to settle. And I'm the one person fighting to make you great. And you're fighting me. Yeah. Think about that, man. So, so your goal is to be around people, John, that, that, that level you up, that tell you the truth. John, if I'm around you and I'm not doing something right, you need to tell me. It is your job as my friend to check my ass. That is it. And by the way, if I get butt hurt, dude, I'm not, then I don't understand that we're friends then. Okay. You know, I walked up to a guy the other day. Listen to this, John. This is crazy shit, dude. Guy comes out of a meeting, right? And I say, hey, dude, you got food on your face. And the guy goes, what? He goes, dude, I ate three hours ago. And I said, well, who the hell you been hanging out for three hours? Because those people clearly don't give a shit about you. Yeah. You got food on your face, dude. John, if I care about you, get the food off your face. You look silly. Yeah. Okay. But the people you've been with for the last three hours didn't have the courage to tell you because they're ass kissers. Okay. Like that's it. Like, dude, people that care about you will tell you the truth. So that's how you know if you're in the right circle. Okay. If you got people that are, that you're average right now and you're not getting what you want, everybody's okay with it. You're in the wrong motherfucking circle. You are around the wrong people. Cause if you're around me, I would, I would bust you up all day long and I wouldn't stop until you performed, which is what you want anyways. It's true. Okay. Which is what you want anyway. <clears throat> See, you're focusing on the bust up part. People, people right now are watching. They're like, oh, I wouldn't let him bust me up. Well, you would never get to your max performance either. Kobe Bryant had a coach. Michael Jordan had a coach. Why did they go pay you know millions of dollars to go down to Attack Academy and get one percent better every day when they were already, already the best in the world? Because they had no pride, ego, or entitlement. They were sponges. They wanted to be the best in the world, and they were willing to pay the price. Dreams come with the price. You don't pay the price, you don't get the dream. Very, very simple. Amen, brother. I have to love it, dude. I could listen to you all day. Hey, one thing. You know what's great? One of my favorite things when I went to your office which is bomb, by the way. You and Jackie run a machine out there. I don't know we how many people. Out. We just built the Lion's Den, den gym. I, I follow it on social. I can't wait to come work yeah, out dude, there with you. We're, build, we're building it out, dude, where we can just work out <laughs> all day long. I mean, dude. that's all we're going to do. We're going to make money on the phone, and we're going to fucking work out all day. Why? Because we can create our own life. People are like, oh, I wish I could do that. You can do whatever you want. Dude, you're going to die one day and you're going to say, I can't believe I had control of my life, my entire life, and I was in prison. I cannot believe that. Dude, like if you're around people like me, I'll tell you, what do you want to do? Go do it. Just make sure you're the best in the world at it. Yeah. And John, I, I want to say something because you were going to ask something. You're talking about being yeah. here. But I want to say something. John, side hustles. Can, can we please cover this? Amen, dude. Whatever you want to talk about, bro. <laughs> People think that insurance is a side hustle. Am I right? Yep. All the time. It's not a side hustle. Can I please be crystal concrete clear? Do it. They don't okay. hear me, dude. Do okay, it. Okay. Because because I we need to cover this because I hear people say, well, yeah, well, I'm going to recruit this guy and he's going to sell part time. Listen, I need you to understand something. Even if he sells a couple of policies, he's not going to take care of his customers. He's doing it part time. He's going to get paid. That money's going to charge back anyways. and It's going to go to you. So why would you recruit a guy like that? I'm just being honest, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you got you made a little money and then you got it taken back. Was it really worth the energy you spent? Stop. I tell people all the time, if you're going to do this part-time, I probably wouldn't even do it. And people are like, I wouldn't do that. I got lots of money coming part-time. You think part-time people take care of their, their people? No. You think they stay in front of them? You think that they're really you know, professionally taking care of these people? No, because they don't look at it like a business. It's a side hustle, a hustle, which means they're hustling people out of money. That money's going to get charged back to you and you're going to go back to E and you spend all that energy. Plus now you're mentally screwed up because you see money going in and money going out instead of money continuing to go like this. If your money's not doing this, you need to figure out what it is that you're doing wrong. Don't 
recruit people doing it as a side hustle. Now people, you know, somebody, may, Andrew Taylor may say, I got lots of people doing side hustles. Listen, I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to tell you why I prefer to find people who will go all in. Okay. So the side hustle game, we're in the era of the entrepreneur. It's 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's talking about side hustles. Everybody says talking about seven streams of income, all this shit. Hey, entrepreneurs have seven streams of income. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I, I, I want to explain something to you. If you do, are doing four things, if you're doing four things, John, and I'm only doing one yep. and you come against me when I'm only doing one thing, badass, and I'm killing it, man. I'm giving it everything I got. And you're good at that. And I'm unstoppable at that. I am going to freaking murder you. Yeah. Okay. I so no I'm shot. Shot. Yes, yeah. because that's all I do. Okay. And you're a side hustle. Also, I want to explain this to you. The terms of entrepreneurship means this. Kill all your side hustles. Find one thing you want to do and become the best in the world at it. You become the top 1% in insurance, which you can, and we want you to. I will explain this. You will be a multimillionaire. Now you will take the money that you made from being a multimillionaire and you will invest it. And that will create multiple streams of income. And now you are very, very good at one thing. You have built a name in the industry for being known as the guy in that space who is the best or she is the best at, at that. And that money that you make will go to investing. And now you're an entrepreneur. People think that entrepreneurship is doing seven things and figuring out how to make a little on a lot. No, I would write, you can either make a little on a lot or you can make a lot or you, or you can make a, a ton on, on a little. And that's what I like about insurance. Okay. I want to do one thing. I want to know how many policies I need to sell a day. I don't want to worry about all this stuff. And then I also want to get people along the way that if I can figure out how to do this, then I can become a teacher to them as well. That makes me feel great as a man. And now I also get a little piece of the pie, right? For a while on these people as they do better. And everybody I run into, I'm just going to say, Hey, you were probably like me. At one point you probably sold your dreams for a salary. And uh, you probably aren't happy with the money you make. And inflation is beating the money that you're making. Your house isn't probably paid off. You don't have paid off cars in the driveway. You can't go on vacation when you want. And if you wake up today with the flu, you got to call a boss and tell him you don't feel like working. Okay. <laughs> Where when I wake up with the flu, I sleep in for a week and I make sure I get myself healthy. I go to the gym. I, I, I get myself mentally right. You know, if that's what I want to do, because I am my boss. Yeah. It's a pretty nice place to be. And then I know when I do pick up the phones that that's all I'm going to do. If my kids want to go, if my kids got to track me today at four o'clock, I don't need to ask anybody to go that track. Me. Right now you have to ask, isn't it weird as an adult to get to ask people when you can do stuff? It's almost like going back to being a kid. Okay. You have a babysitter as a, as an employer. Okay. Why don't you become a real entrepreneur and take control of your own damn life? Go sell the number one thing where people are getting rich, which is insurance, and it feels good to help people. And all you have to do is train and understand the business and become a badass. And you will become rich, John. And that's everybody on this call. But listen, man, they've got to decide that that's what they want to do. We already know what happens when people make that decision. Okay. It is suck fest. Everybody, they need to understand your life in, in the beginning of the first three years of insurance is suck fest. It is suck fest, but after suck fest is over, it comes into snowball fest and snowball fest means a snowball so big that it can't be stopped. Yeah. And then money's coming in and your bank accounts increasing and life is great. And imagine if you were 33 right now, by the time you're 36 years old, what could happen? You know, imagine, you know, Hayden, he didn't know what his life was going to look like. Young kid, Nina, she didn't know what her life was going to look like. None yeah. of them do. Yeah. You know what they did? They believed blindly. And I think we need to say that, John. Believe blindly. John, if a guy's 30 years old, I'll say, you've been doing it for 12 years. How'd that work out for you? Why don't you believe blindly for two years? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I just want to say, we can talk whatever, but I just want to say I side hustle shit. Like, look, everybody's got a different opinion. You know what I love about this world? We can all have our own opinions and our own stuff. You know what some people do? They get tired of me talking about working out. John, I don't sell working out. But you know what? I am telling you in this space, John, if you right now looked at yourself naked in the mirror, right? And you were in warrior status, ready to go to war. I assure you, your business today would be on another level. Yeah. 
Hey, I've you're never, you're making I, me pick up my game. I every day I work out now, I'm like, I gotta keep up with that fool. We're about the same age. I'm only a couple years older than you, and you're jacked. I'm like, I know, shit, dude. And, I gotta and pick 40, it up. And 40s are the new 20s, bro. Yeah. I'm listen, working on dude, it, dude. Listen, dude, I'm telling you, listen, the more uncomfortable you can get, okay, the greater you're gonna become. Yeah. Okay, I need you to understand this. Everybody controls their own life right now. If you're not getting what you want, then change something in your life. Don't settle another day. And by the way, John, be around people that tell you, John, listen, bro. And I'll tell people, I'll say, pull up your shirt. I'll say, come on, I want to see it. And I'll tell people that, pull up your shirt, come on. I'll say, I want to see that six pack. And they say, well, I don't have one. Dude, you're undisciplined, bro. Tell me to my face. Say, I'm undisciplined. Come on. I want to hear it out of your mouth because I want you to say it because I want it to burn. I am undisciplined. Yeah. Feels That's pretty crappy as a man to say that. So you know what? The yeah. next time I see you in 90 days from now, you're either going to say I'm undisciplined or you're going to show me a six pack. Dude, don't listen to me. I, I'm going to hold you accountable. And by the way, you either want to not be my friend and you'll want to go be around people who, who you can hide with. See, John, I don't let people hide. You know what, John, people right now need to expose their weaknesses instead of hiding from them. True. If they expose them, they'll fix them and become great. Dude, imagine if I had a problem in my company right now and I was like, oh my God, we got to hide that. No ways. No ways. I don't care if I have to go two steps backwards. And by the way, I want to say one thing, John, if somebody's on this call right now and they've been in corporate America, they've gone through salaries, they've made money, they've got money in the bank. I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather continue to work for these people and be owned, right? Have a salary, sell your dreams, okay? Never be able to have the life that you see us having. Never, never, never. Yeah. Okay? And feel like you got a little egg in the bank for 20 grand. Or would you rather risk it all, which you're already risking it all right now? Because we know what your life will look like when you die now if you don't do this. We already know. There's no guessing because we already see it. Okay? John, I would walk two steps backwards to go 10 steps forward. Okay. John, when I started my business, me and my wife sold our, we had a million dollar house. And I mean, like in Oklahoma, that was a good house. Um, we had a million dollar house, right? We're doing great. We got cash in the bank. Life's good. I walk away from a two and a half million dollar job as a GM because I got freaking lied to again. And I hate getting lied to. I hate, listen to me. Insurance is easy. I hear people talk about chargebacks. Dude, they gave you the money in advance. Go on as earned if you don't want it. It's cool. Okay. Like, like it's cool. Like, guys, listen to me. Go on as earned if you only want to see what you make today. It's the easiest thing to do. That way it's very clear. But if you're like me and you want to leverage that money and do a good job and provide customer service to the client, right? Make sure you stay in front of them, call them, make sure they're good, right? Do listen to me. <laughs> do it. Be a professional. Dude, professionals do follow up. Amateurs don't. Okay. Yeah. Amateurs go back to their old life. Professionals advance up. But I'm telling you, some people need to take two steps backwards. We sold our house, John. We, we, we moved into a freaking $1,500 a month um, freaking rental place, dude. We literally slept on mattresses with me and my wife. We sold all our furniture. We, we worked off plastic tables for two years. Okay. Dude, all we did was build in the dark. We grinded. We, dude, we freaking suffered. We learned what we were doing. We made mistakes. Dude, we, we recreated ourselves. We, we, dude, we completely just like David Goggins out in the mental lab of like our life and who we are. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, it was an FBI lab. Ask Jennifer. You walk in our house. It was literally an FBI lab. <laughs> like totally, right? You know what I'm saying? Jennifer, was it an FBI Girl, lab? that's what we called it, the FBI lab. I love it. It's not love just it. on the ground. There's plastic tables. And, <laughs> and by the way, her husband, listen to me. Listen to this, John. Her husband came to work with me, right? Yeah. Okay. He flew down and came to work. He was my very first employee. His name's Sean Paul. Oh, and I yeah, want to he's tell dope. You I like it. Yeah. Hey. Did I torture his ass? Yes, and it was great. <laughs> yes, and did and I? And he tortured mine too. <laughs> and then I tortured her ass. Hey, but are you happy? Very. Okay. Life changing. Yeah. Isn't that cool, John? <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah, but uh, isn't that but isn't that cool though, man? That like, yeah. like, they they were living an undisciplined life. They had a salary and had all that. Dude, they gave it all up, man. 
Sean's got a six pack. He's ripped up. He was 230 pounds fat when he came here. He's 190 pounds lean. Dude, she lost 50 pounds. Look how great she looks now. Dude, it's like the fountain of youth, man, when you decide to get committed to winning. Your whole building was that. That's what I was going to say, dude. I walked in. I've never been in an office with the energy your office had. Everyone was standing up. Everyone was on the phone. And, dude, I don't think there was 15% body fat combined. <laughs> like, I well, think you because, said something about they got to have a six-pack to work for you. Don't, isn't that, like, accurate? Well, yeah. So, like, and, and by the way, like, again, I'm going to get some haters here, which I'm totally okay with it, all right? Amen. My goal with you is to make you elite in all areas. John. Yeah. I do not want people to work around me, okay, who are not who are one dimensional. I'm gonna explain what I mean. John, if you cheat on your wife, I'm gonna fire you. If you cheat on your girlfriend, I'm going to fire you, John. You say, dude, wh what is that? What should that have to do? It has to do with everything. It has to do with my core values. It has to do with my standards. And John, if I'm gonna let you in my inner circle and you're gonna work for me around my company, I am not gonna have someone around me. Okay. You should want to level me up. Okay. Are you a consumer or a contributor? You just sucking the life out of me and what's in it for me every day, or are you bringing good shit to my life too? So I'm going to explain this to you. Talk about relationships. Dude, you don't take care of your kids. I'll fire you. Okay. Listen to me. And by the way, people are like, dude, listen, what should it matter if somebody cheats on the girl? You're gone. You go, Hey, work for someone else. You're not going to work for me. Don't have a girlfriend. It, to me, it's all about the, the, the commitment. Did you get committed to that? Did you, why do something if you're not going to do it all the way? Right? Like, so my goal is, is this, is if you cheat on your girl, you're out of here. If you don't take care of your kids, you're out of here. If you don't handle your finances, you're out of here. Okay. If you don't take care of your health, you're out of here. John, Andrew Taylor said something a long time ago, and I, I've said it forever, but he said it and it reminded me about insurance. We do two things and there's are two secret weapons. You do things that other people can't do and you do things that other people won't do. Okay. John, all day long, would I rather eat a cheeseburger than a piece of grilled chicken? Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't I? Cheeseburgers are freaking awesome. But guess what? Sin is awesome too. It's not good for you. Okay. I need you to understand something. When, when I see somebody, okay, and I'm not perfect, but I'm, when I see somebody and they can't choose the chicken over the cheeseburger or the grilled turkey patty over the freaking burrito, right? You know what? How can I trust them with my clients? How can I trust them here with the, everything that I've built and I've worked for? How can I trust that they're going to do the right thing when I'm not looking? And by the way, John, it's very clear. You know how I know whether you've been doing the right thing when I'm not around? Because it shows me in your body. I tell my team, if they're not getting leaner, if they're not getting stronger, if they're not working out, I'm not going with them to the gym. I'm not going to meal prep their food. I'm not going to tell them what to eat. But I'm going to tell them what I expect. It is for them to be elite. And John, if my goal is to coach you and my goal is to show you what an extreme level of winning looks like, because I'm an extreme guy, like I need you to understand this. You need to look at me and say, eh, he's doing, he's doing what he's telling me to do. Yeah. Okay. So like, I need you to know that that's a big deal. So, so this is another deal. Like, again, you're not me. I'm not you, but every freaking Saturday we have a sales meeting in the morning. I make everybody take their shirts off in my company and I have a meeting. And I've got a giant mirror downstairs. And I make them all look at themselves in the mirror. And I say, how hard are you? How hard? I want you to look at you. This isn't about me. I'm not judging you. I don't judge anybody. I want you to look at you. Really, how hard are you? How hard have you been going? Okay. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. If you go to the doctor right now and you had 10 million cash in the bank and they told you you had cancer. They said for 10 million, we could cure it. Would you give up the 10 million to be healthy again? Yes or no? Everyone yeah. Would. Yeah. Because if you didn't, you'd die. Yeah. So obviously you would. So I'm going to say this health is more important than, than money. Am I right? Yep. So the number one thing that will be a priority in my company is that you are going to have to be in great health. Okay. I am planning to be successful with you for a very long time. Okay. Indeed. That's it. So I just want to say like, that's why everybody's in shape around here. But also on top of that, I, people don't have to be like me. I don't say, hey, you got to be like Andy Elliott. You know what I say? You got to be like the content. What is the content? If you go to Instagram right now and you pull up the IG account and you look at all and you see that content, you need to be like that. Can you be like this? Do you believe what I believe? Do, you, do I believe what you believe? Can you be like this? If you can, you can work here. And I don't want any fake ass people. Is this who you want to be? And by the way, I believe in total recreation. What if I got a person right now, John, that says, I'm not like you. 
I could say, cool, do you want to be? Do you want to be like whoever you look up to? My mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. John, you know what you want next, okay? The goal is you find somebody not to envy, but to emulate. That's it. If somebody did it before you, go follow them. Why not? John, why do you think I ask you all these questions? Like, hey, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Because I would be a fool to do it on my own. Why wouldn't I ask you if you would help me? Oh my God, man. You just saved me 20 years. That's called compressing time frames. So I'm just saying like, dude, everybody that's watching this, they have everything they need. They have a mind. If you're, if you're not, you know, disabled and you have hands and feet and a leg and you got a mouth and you have a heart, dude, like you're, you're qualified. Like, that's it. Like you're all qualified, man. And sometimes I believe God uses the people that are the most unlikely to ever do something great to make a great example out of him. And he's waiting for people to step up right now. He's waiting for people to say, hey man, I'm not gonna quit. And, and that's it, John. I think like in the beginning, you know, like you, I think everybody should ask everybody, hey, I need you to make a decision. John, are you gonna be here next year? Like, like don't tell me three years from now, but just, are you gonna be here next year? Yeah, I'll, I'll be here, no matter what. Okay, I know he's gonna make it. I know he is. It's the people that start for two or three months and quit that don't make it. You know why? They never gave themselves time to make it. It's true. Right? They put it in, dude. They don't. They, yeah, I agree. I, and, I love that y'all have seen it. Yeah. You, you love them, but if you're going to quit and go back to the starting line, dude, yeah. I mean, why did you even leave your salary job? Yeah. And by the way, everybody's looking for something easy. I want to tell everybody it doesn't exist. It Man. does not exist. Please understand John Wetmore, his life. He's looking at us with this beautiful smile. His life's a bitch. It's hell. Yes, he sir. operates out of hell every day and he loves it. He has no problem with it. He's not unhappy about it. He loves the challenges that he gets every day. They're not problems. I didn't say problems. He loves the challenges. John is a solver. Okay. His job is to solve. There's nothing he can't solve. Everybody that's become great in any area of life solved some problems. Some of them got what they wanted a little quicker than others. Some of it took longer, but all of them that didn't quit got it. That's the science. That's it. it. Bro. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We could do this for days. I know you're obviously you're speaking at our convention in February in a month, under a month. Looking I'm forward excited. to that. But in, in the meantime, dude, if people want to get your content, get your training, I know you do a ton of events, I obviously, but how, how do you, how do you prefer people follow you, get to you, get yeah, yeah. So like your programs, etc. Yeah. Two ways. So, so number one, I mean, if you want to like get just daily content and kind of see, you know, the stuff that we drop daily and what's going on in our life, which do all the stuff, like it's all freaking like, if you watch, if you go to even go to Instagram, it's, it's at official Andy Elliott. But if you go official Andy Elliott on Instagram, Dude, when you log in, I mean, I'm just telling you, like, you know, a lot of people give tips. Like, we show closing live deals. We yeah, show did. being crazy. We show that stuff because because I because that's the stuff that I want to see. So I put out the stuff that I, I'm looking for myself, right? Yeah. Um, and then also, secondly, if somebody needed help and they're like, dude, hey, I want to go to a closing event. Like, me and Bradley, yeah. um, like, February 4th, it's coming up. But we have the ultimate closer summit. So it's like, I know you guys have your event. We're going out to speak. We're flying back on our deal. But we do these every other month. So like somebody could just text me and say, hey, send me a schedule of events for the whole year, right? From like now till December. Or, you know, what is your platform, your training platform looks like? Check this out, John. I'm going to show you something for 30 seconds. Okay. And I don't, I don't know. I can't really screen share on this, can I? No, I was going to show you what I just built, but it's- Yo, can we do it? If he can, let us know how, because you know, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It, let's not worry about it. No, no, no. We're, we're cool because do we'll it. get it all messed up. But I wanted to show you, I just built- a <laughs> Yeah, we would. <laughs> Yeah, dude, because I'm not the IT guy. I, I built a new system, John, yep. that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a video when I hang up. But I'm going to give you the cell phone. If anybody's like, hey, send me a, a list of the events all year long. Um, send me that system that you're talking about um, and just let me look at it. I'll give you free access. Anybody on this call, I'll give you a free access for 72 hours. If you want to just get in it, dig in it, look at it, check it out. I cover mindset, skill set, motivation, habits. I cover closing, negotiating. I, clo I cover it all. But, but here's my point. The cell phone number is 918-210-0254. They can just text that 918-210-0254 and I'll send them access for 72 hours. Okay. But anyways, dude, when you log in, the first thing is first, mental mindset. 
I literally attack the brain right away. Why? Because I'm going to say this. If I can change the way you think, I will change your entire life. Um, so that's what we work on first. That's the first module. And then it unleashes all the closing, the word tracks, all that stuff. And dude, I, it, I swear, man, once after watching one five minute segment of training, you're going to want to punch somebody in the face. And you're literally, <laughs> I swear, listen, you're, you're going to make three cells. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Because internally, you've you've unlocked, and you become someone else. So, um, anyways, love everybody. I know it, I know it's time to roll, but I just want to say we're grateful for you. We'll see you, um, you know, at the FFL event and uh, what, yeah. what's it? Lone, Lone Depot is that right? Yeah, Lone Depot Park, man. Yeah, looking Lone forward Depot. to it, bro. And I appreciate your time, dude. I'm, I'm excited to have you on. I'm 100 percent sure we'll do a ton more together. And anything I can do to help you guys, dude, anytime, let me know, please. Yeah, I, I call you all the time. And the next time you're out here, I'm telling you, at six pack, okay? It's coming, you. dude. I know, but I'm going to not. 40, I'll be 46 in March. I will take tips. Dude, all you have to do is remember, you're not 46. You're 20, bro. Stop acting 46. Okay? I love it. I Stop love acting it. 46, man. Get out there and let's get crazy, baby. <laughs> I go. Okay? Hey, just be disciplined. Remember this. Just be disciplined. Everything, okay. every decision you make, everything you put in your body, everything you put in your brain, I want you to think, does this take me towards where I want to go or away from where I want to go? We'll end it on that. And if it doesn't take you towards where you want to go, don't do it. And by the way, don't negotiate with yourself. Oh, should I do this? Should I get out of bed? Should I sleep 10 more minutes? Should I get your ass up now? Dude, you're, you're negotiating with your, your best life. Don't do it. Get up. And by the way, an hour later, you will thank yourself that you did it. I swear on my life. And you'll be so proud of you. So, in and on that note, we love you, bro. You're the best. I'm 20. I love you. You're it, 20, dude. man. Go beast mode. I can see that six pack. Okay. It's coming. I mean, I know. Keep making a bunch of money, man. Keep training people. We love you guys. Yes, sir. Appreciate right. you, bro. We'll talk All right. soon. Have a great day. See you, brother. Bye. See you guys.